Renee Productions. Hello everyone, welcome back to another replay cast. I am a Shaden and this is Ashfire Gaming. We have another game. This is the second game in a series from Ashfire vs. Ashfire Clan Battle. Two players that we know and love. And without further ado. Representing Team Mashfire Gaming, sporting the teal Terran trunks, it is Crumb. And his opponents. Once again, also representing the greatest clan in all of StarCraft. Speaking from a biased opinion, since it's our clan, it is Bull Sammy, LOL. The blue zerg. Gotta be a little difficult to see sometimes. Being blue versus blue. Actually, I find it that if you're a zerg and you're up against another zerg or another player that's running with purple, it ends up actually very hard to see. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to see replays get cast, please send them to ashfiregaming.esports at gmail.com. Cast all games from Bronze to Grandmaster, Teams and Arcade. So if you have any fun game you'd like to have cast, send them away. Don't hesitate. Send them. They will get cast as soon as I can. And so we are having a good early scout from our Terran Crumb who is going to see the hatch. He's going to see the gas and he's definitely going to see the spawning pool. <laughs> So that's a good thing to know if you're Crumb. So Crumb decides, okay, well I don't have to worry about too, too much early Zerg aggression quite as yet since the expansion was nice and early. So he's going to go ahead and take his natural. Now we have the Reaper on the way. He's going to go ahead and get the scout. Once again, guys, I love the way this Reaper looks. This mech Reaper is phenomenal. We do have Zergling speed on the way. Or metabolic boost it's kind of like Red Bull you ever seen that mean metabolic boost gives you wings yes it does especially if you're the Zerg player of course it doesn't make them fly so I quite know exactly why they're there per se. but anyways the Reaper's gonna come in he's going to see that the drones have been semi saturated so he knows there's not a huge 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 Zergling run by coming by or anything like that quite as yet and it looks like we are just going ahead and looking to finish that natural and going right into the man <laughs> right into the starport i don't know how i forgot some of these names i'm gonna play all the time well not all the time i guess semi-regularly as of late but this guy has lived far too long if you're crumb and i think that's going to be the end of it if he stops there it is okay now it's going to be gone Unless, unless uh, Crikey can save it. Crikey is going for his third. And I think Crikey's actually going to be able to save that. There's not another uh, Marine coming in yet. Well, maybe yet. not another Marine coming in yet. So that guy is going to narrowly get away. Maybe he could send his Marine all the way around here. Let's see if that's where he's going. Yeah, he was clicked over there. No, he stopped. Oh, well, he could have got this bad boy. It would actually really helped. But third's almost done, about 75%. Stim is on the way, just started about 10% of the way, got 90% left, so about a minute before it finishes. Good old Stim, man. All right, but now, uh oh, there's the Viking, and we can say goodbye to that Overlord. Looks like we do have a Hellion run by coming in but these queens are there ready to go handful of links here kind of try to and kite them a little bit would have been cool to see a good surround but we didn't quite see that yet but here it comes 
if he can split it and surround both sides, he would actually be able to take that party out. And let's see if our creep spread continues. Oh, it looks like we're going for banelings. And I think, I don't know, I think Crumb may have spotted the banelings just on the edge, so I think he knows they're coming. But we do have Lib on the way. Good old Liberator. The thing that we all hate if we're not Terran. Love if we are. Now what is that? That's a Thor. Or is that like the Odin thing? I always forget sometimes. Looks like we have that ready to go. Haven't quite seen a drop yet coming from uh, our Terran player. Especially with all this open space here. Widow Mine's getting placed carefully so that the Zerglings can't run by and do a lot of damage without taking some damage in the end. So that's actually kind of cool. I kind of like putting Widow Mines like right here by the watchtowers. Just kind of like, whoa, where'd they go? <laughs> and so Widow Mines are going to be the name of the game. And take you one ahead and taking his natural gas. Here comes in another run by, sees the Banelings, knows they're coming, lot of units here. So that's going to spark a ton more units. And so yeah, Creep Spread is continuing on to the third base. Two medevacs in production and Baneling speed. More Banelings, more drones. Gonna give myself a seizure. Ah! <laughs> Alright, so I guess you heard that folks. CC's upgraded. That's awesome. So orbital command on the natural, ready to go. Fully saturated. For the most part. Just gotta transfer a couple of these guys over here. Get the rest of the gas. But that being said, here comes the third. Now we are electing to continue making Zerglings and Banelings. I guess that's what they're doing. If I'm not mistaken. We do, yeah, yeah, of course. We do have that. But the Lib is able to make some good work there. And is he going to go back on gas now? That's the question. But it was cool that he was actually able to hold it and not lose too, too much. Let's go ahead and see here. Workers killed. So Crumb did get five workers with that limb. So that's not bad. I think it was five. Yeah, kills five. Yeah, he got all of it right there. That's cool. I really like this interface. It's pretty dope. We don't have anything on gas yet for the third. But this little bio push was able to clean up that fourth expansion really quickly. Oh no. And oh, that, oh, he was able to actually kill it. That was actually really cool. And it looks like this is going to get cleaned up right away. Crikey has definitely gotten a lot better over the years. A lot better. And here comes the Viking. Just a little bit of a patrol route. Just coming back and forth. Trying to see what he can see, see, see. And yep, so the fourth is going right back down. <laughs> right in the vision of Crumb. And it looks like that Lib wasn't able to get a whole lot done here. But he can kind of drop these guys, maybe harass a little bit. It would just kind of force Crikey to get on the defensive somewhat. So he can have to be at all different places. Fourth CC going down for Crumb. Also 2-2 two, two, and Spire Tech going down for our Zerg player. And 2-2 two, two as well. I like this wall tactic. It really works out very nicely, I think. And so Crumb knows where the army is for the Zerg. And so he's going to be ready for that. Constant production here on both sides. We do have uh, six, seven, about eight racks going on here for Crumb. Uh, finally, going to go ahead and get concussive shells. 
trying to get that third, fourth again. Wasn't able to get it. But he is actually kind of making good use, trying to kill the Baneling Count. And that's more important, I guess, right now for Crumb. So he did sack all those units. I don't know if it was really worth it. But these mutas coming in might have been able... Oh. So he did manage to save his medevacs. Actually, if, I think if he would have engaged that, he would have lost his mutas to this. What am I? So that's a great thing. Fourth is going down for Chrome. And his army is ready and raring to go to defend this base with their lives. This little guy here, he is he is this game's Joe. He is elected not to work. Just kind of chilling. Hey, uh, yep, I don't want to do anything today. He's just like, Ooh. I don't know. He just doesn't want to do anything. Oh well. He's not going to be handling too much. So fourth is already down. Fifth is almost complete. So both of them are on equal basis. We do have a drop coming now. Now the, we don't have an overlord at all in this little vicinity here. So he could theoretically end the game by killing this hive tech that's on the way. If he could join in. But, but there are tons of banelings, but they are way out of position here. Where is his army? His army's all the way down here. So once he gets in, yeah, he doesn't see it. He could literally stim in, snipe the hive, and run. That would be the plan. Let's see what happens. The stim hits. He needs to go in and get the hive. Get the hive. Oh, is he going to get it? That's the question. Oh, he's going to go after the boat. Nope, it wasn't fast enough. He did get the bailing nest, though, which immediately goes back down. Oh, but the drop, the teardrop is wicked, but all the, oh, 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 the horror for those medevacs dying. I mean, he's not going to be able to pick up all that army. He needed to go ahead and get as much damage as he could. And Crikey is able to clean that up. I think the Hive would have been the best target. He could have got the Hive slowing the Baneling Nest down. Uh, it builds pretty quickly. The Hive would have been good to prevent the Overlords or the, the Ultralisks from coming anytime soon. 3-3-3 on the way. And air upgrades coming up for our Zerg player. And now we that has sparked more Liberators. And 3-3 for our Terran player. So Captain Crikey, our Bull Sammy LOL, is got his Baneling Ling Muta army coming. Ling Bane Muta. I'm gonna be cleaning up every attempt to attack. But now we have a lot of CCs coming down with Widow Mines. This could be a planetary fortress wall. And if he gets a lot of turrets up, like I think he's going to our Widow Mines, that would be crazy. Now we do have one more drop coming on the way here for Crumb. And let's go ahead and see what happens. Keep your ends and arms inside the medevac. Here we go. But it looks like now he's going to be able to see it by doing the creep spread. So now once it drops, he's going to, Bull Sammy's going to see the drop. Yep, there it is right off the bat. And I think, honestly, the spore is going to be able to, oh my gosh, the spore is able to freaking take it out. And all these Marines are just going down. No damage being done here. But he is able to get this base. And yep, there's the Ultralisk and his Widowmine wasn't able to do anything because of the Spore. And now we have Ultralisks out. So we got Ultralisks out. Max upgrades will be on the way for ground. And the air upgrade is almost complete for plus two on the air attack. Three more libs on the way for a crumb. Two more metamex and a ton of planetary fortresses. Yeah, planetary fortress wall. 
Well, that should become Planetary Fortress. Oh. Should. Well, so, I mean, Crumb is floating a lot of money. He actually has a little bit better of an economy. So I think both these are actually going to be turning into Planetary Fortresses. So he's just trying to make sure that those uh, Ultralis can't just walk in here and make a nuisance out of him. And here we go, the libs are positioned for the attack. I'd actually like to see a handful of widow mines in here. Oh my gosh, the banglings make short work out of everything in the splits though. And then the mutas are able to come in here and clean up all the libs. The splits were just not enough and the mutas were able to come in and get so much damage done. And now I think this could basically be like a 1A scenario here. Oh my gosh, and Crumb is salty. Oh my gosh. And I think this could be it here. There was no A move for me. I'm reading the chat here. Oh my gosh, all the SCVs are going down, but he may actually have gotten a couple of libs. But he's actually repairing it. He's actually fighting for it. But there's just too much power here coming, and then the rest of the Zerg Max is coming with more lings. And those just, oh my gosh, this is disgusting. And this with the Overseers, there's not a whole lot here. He needs to engage. The, oh, the mutas. The mutas are just making so much work. And they just all come in. They're just walking in. They ring the doorbell and walk right in. The mutas are making so much work with these libs. And there it is. All the libs are gone. And it just looks like there's too much Zerg. The Ling Flood is here. The Flood of the Swarm is here and they are all up inside this base. So I don't know, I'm just gonna have to take a miracle for come to hold this. His units are spawning, they're dying as they spawn, but he is trying to fight till the very end. And it looks like he was able to clean up all the mutas though. The question is, are more on the way? Yeah, four more mutas on the way. And he's just trying to pick up his, his tech right now. Trying to get some sort of damage done. I'm actually surprised these haven't become Banelings yet. But the CCs lives. A few, a few structures live, but then just the swarm, this army, and all these mutas are here now. The, ma the mass muta army is here. And they know that this is what the, the liberators are all that come has to actually deal with this. Definitely going to have to not lose his mutas. He does start losing them. But can this be held is the question. Can this be held? And I just think it's just going to be too much. The reinforcements, the, the attacking power, and just the sheer economy of consistency is going to end. Yeah, that CC does go down. So seven more mutas on the way. Nothing there to defend. I think that's going to be game here. Oh, the Marines just die as soon as they get out. Oh my gosh. This is brutal. Just too much Zerg. The next CC goes down. I think Crumb is going to try and stay in it even still with this one base. But the mutas are actually significantly dying here by these turrets. The turrets are no longer more. And now more and more mutas are on the way. Crumb says, wow. A GG. Game number two. Game number two goes to Bull Sammy LOL. All right, guys. Hey, once again, thanks for watching. Give me a like, give me a follow if you like what you see, and I'll see you guys next time. Laters.